Good evening. Welcome to actually our final Wednesday night service. Next week we have Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, but we will not be here Wednesday night. But we have Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday. But we're returning. We've been having dinner with Jesus in different places. Actually, we're going back to a venue that we were at earlier. Because earlier, Jesus was at the house of Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. And he's back again. And this passage is set six days before the Passover, which would be Saturday of this week, getting close to Holy Week. And you'll hear Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus again, but with something else. So, Buenas noches, queridas hermanas y hermanos. Estamos celebrando el día de hoy, el último miércoles de cuaresma. Ya previo a la Semana Santa y vamos a hablar un poco porque Jesús regresa a tener una cena con Marta, María y Lázaro. Eso sucedió el lunes santos antes de Cristo morir. Entonces vamos a estar hablando de eso. Sean todas y todos bienvenidos a la casa del Señor. And this song, oh sing to the Lord, we'll sing verses... Um, one and two, okay? One and two, one and two. We rise as we continue now with our invocation and responsive readings. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Empezamos todos, queridas hermanas y hermanos, en el nombre del Padre, del Hijo, y del Espíritu Santo. Amen. The Lord bless you. Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city. El Señor te bendiga. And keep you, for I am the Lord your God. Y te guarde. The Lord make his face shine upon you. El Señor haga resplandecer su rostro sobre ti. And be gracious to you. Y tenga piedad de vosotros. Y 
the Lord turn his face toward you. El Señor vuelva su rostro hacia ti. No permitirá que te pierdas el Padre. No se lo olvidará que te guarda. Ciertamente no se lo olvidará. Ni lo olvidará que te guarda el Padre. El Señor te protege. El Señor es tu sombra a tu mano derecha. And give you peace. Os dé la paz. Y la paz de Dios, que sobrepasa todo entendimiento, guardará vuestros corazones y vuestros pensamientos en Cristo Jesús. Please be seated. Can I have all the kids come on up front? How are you doing? Do you know what? Have, have you ever been in trouble? Yes. Come on over here. Come on. Have you, you, know, I, you know, sometimes kids get in trouble, right? I want to tell you a story about a kid who got in big, big trouble. Do you know he was 10 years old, and his mom told him when he's 10 years old, he could walk home from school by himself. He lived only two blocks away from school, but his mom always picked him up and they, somebody walked him home or a neighbor did. But when he was 10, he was allowed to walk home with his friend and walk home. But one day, he, his mom said, I have a doctor's appointment right after school, so you've got to walk straight home and then we're all going to the doctor's appointment. And so he was 10 and he was, do you know how old you are when you're 10? Fourth grade, right? Fourth grade. And he was walking home and then one of his other friends said, do you know what I have? The newest and best video game. And he said, oh, I want to see it. And do you know what he did? He went over to his friend's house and he played on the video game for an hour. And then he said, oh, I'm supposed to go home. And then he came home and he was an hour late. And do you know who missed their doctor's appointment? The mom. And you know, do you think she was happy? She was madder than he's ever seen his mo mom ever. And you know what he, she said? You're grounded for maybe forever. And you know what? You know what you're going to eat tonight for dinner? Bread and water. And you know what they were having that night? His favorite dinner in the world? Spaghetti and then brownies for dessert. Get in your room. And it may be even worse when your dad comes home. So he went to his room and he was thinking, oh, am I in big, big trouble, terrible trouble. And then he came down. They sat at dinner table. And you know what was in front of him for his dinner? Bread and water. And everybody else was having spaghetti and they were going to get brownies. But after they said a prayer... Do you know what his dad did? He was thinking he was going to get in big trouble with his dad. Do you know what his dad did? He slid over his spaghetti and meatballs and put three brownies on the side of the spaghetti and meatballs and he took his bread and water and his dad ate bread and water for dinner and he had spaghetti and he had three brownies. He was wondering, what's happening? And at the end of dinner... He didn't ask questions through dinner. His dad just ate bread and water. He asked his dad, Dad, I thought I was in big trouble. Why did you do that? And his dad said, you know what? You were in big, big trouble. But you know what? I was in big trouble. And you know what? Somebody took the penalty for me. And the little boy looked at him and said, Dad, who did that? Who did that for you? And you know who he said? Jesus. And you know what? We're coming up on this, this Lenten season and we're thinking about, you know, next Friday 
we have a day, and I get asked kids by this all the time doing chapels. I've done so many chapels with kids on Good Friday, and they, they hear what happened to Jesus. And, do you know, they said, how can you call this day good? Because it's sort of like that dad who took the penalty for his son... Jesus takes the penalty for our sins for every one of us. Even though something terrible happened, it was the best day ever for us. Do you like spaghetti? Do you like brownies? You are, you're, you're, <laughs> he doesn't like brownies. You don't, okay. You're more a chicken nugget person, right? No? A picky eater. Oh, all right. But just think about that. Jesus takes the penalty for us because he loves us. Well, let's say a prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for taking the penalty we deserve because you love us. Thank you again. And we love you too. Amen. All right. You guys can go back to your seats. Let us rise as we hear the gospel reading. The Holy Gospel is written in the 12th chapter of St. John, beginning at the first verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Six days before the Passover, Jesus therefore came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. So they gave a dinner for him there. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those reclining with him at the table. Mary, therefore, took a pound of expensive ointment made from pure nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, who was about to betray him, said... Why was this ointment not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. And having charge of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was needed into it. Jesus said, leave her alone, so that she may keep it for the day of my burial. For the poor you always have with you, but you do not always have me. When the large crowd of the Jews learned that Jesus was there, they came. Not only on account of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests made plans to put Lazarus to death as well. Because on account of him, many of the Jews were going away and believing in Jesus. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Christ. Queridas hermanas y hermanos, el Santo Evangelio está escrito en el capítulo 12 de San Juan, comenzando en el versículo 1. Seis días antes de la Pascua, llegó Jesús a Betania, donde vivía Lázaro, a quien Jesús había resucitado. Allí se dio una cena en honor de Jesús. Marta servía y allí Lázaro era uno de los que estaban en la mesa con él. María tomó entonces como medio litro de nardo puro que era un perfume muy caro, y lo derramó sobre los pies de Jesús, secándoselos luego con sus cabellos, y la casa se llenó de la fragancia del perfume. Judas Escariote, que era uno de sus discípulos y que más tarde lo traicionaría, objetó, ¿por qué no se vendió este perfume que vale muchísimo dinero para dárselo a los pobres? Dijo esto no porque se interesaba por los pobres, sino porque era un ladrón, y como tenía a su cargo la bolsa de dinero, de acostumbraba robarse lo que echaban en ella. Déjala en paz, respondió Jesús. Ella ha estado guardando este perfume para el día de mi sepultura. A los pobres siempre los tendrán con ustedes, pero a mí no siempre me tendrán. Mientras tanto, muchos de los judíos se enteraron de que Jesús estaba allí. Y fueron a ver no solo a Jesús, sino también a Lázaro a quien Jesús había resucitado. Entonces los jefes de los sacerdotes resolvieron matar también a Lázaro, 
pues por su causa muchos se apartaban de los judíos y creían en Jesús. Este es el Evangelio de nuestro Señor. Please be seated. Una vez más, hermanas y hermanos, la gracia y la paz de nuestro Señor sea con cada uno de nosotros. Amén. Acabamos de escuchar el Santo Evangelio del día de hoy, Juan, el Evangelio de Juan, capítulo 12, versos del 1 al 11. Es tan interesante este pasaje del día de hoy, hermanos, porque concuerda perfectamente con este tiempo de cuaresma. Este tiempo donde estamos próximos al domingo de palmas, estamos próximos a la muerte y resurrección de Cristo Jesús. Y digo que es ideal para el día de hoy porque esto sucedió exactamente el día lunes. Seis días antes de la resurrección, el día lunes santo, vino Jesús a Betania, donde estaba ahí Lázaro, a quien había resucitado de entre los muertos. Si miramos en la Biblia, eso lo encontramos en el capítulo anterior, en Juan, el capítulo 11, ahí está la resurrección de Lázaro. Y hoy Juan nos habla a nosotros de la proximidad de la Pascua, la presencia de Lázaro que ya Jesús había resucitado entre los muertos. Esto ya es una señal de lo que va a suceder con él unos días después. Y precisamente hermanos el tema de hoy sucede en ese lunes santo próximo a Jesús dar la vida por ti, por mí. Por todos nosotros en ese acto redentor que nos dio la vida eterna. Que nos dio el perdón completo de todos nuestros pecados. Pensemos un momento y pensemos un poco esto hermanos. Antes de que llegara ese día trágico, ese viernes santo donde hubo tantas cosas que nuestro salvador Tuvo que padecer por nosotros. Cómo lo humillaron. Cómo lo mataron. Todas las cosas que le decían. Ese momento difícil. Pero un momento que quedó enmarcado para nosotros. Todos los enemigos estaban contentos ese día. Pero a las afueras de Jerusalén. Es cuando Jesús. Previamente el lunes. Él está feliz con Marta, con María, con Lázaro. Están teniendo una cena. Betania, un poco afuera de Jerusalén. María, como dice hoy el Evangelio, tomando medio litro de nardo puro o legítimo, que en ese momento tenía un valor grande, un valor incalculable, ungió los pies de Jesús y los enjugó con sus cabellos y la casa dice la palabra se llenó de la fragancia del perfume de María esa escena que es un poco extraña que es un poco misteriosa en primer lugar en esa época para la cultura era un gesto de amistad era un gesto gratuito era un gran gesto que hacían las personas. Pero ahí Judas. Y lo tienen en sus boletines. Judas dice. ¿Por qué este perfume no se vendió en 300 denarios? Y se dio a los pobres. Hay algo interesante. Y esto, esto Judas no lo estaba diciendo de corazón. Tenía otras intenciones. Y decía una fortuna. De tanto dinero en aquella época debía o presentaba el salario de un jornalero de todo un año. ¿Por qué estamos hablando de esto hermanos? Jesús de una vez le dice 
déjala. Lo tenía guardado para el día de mi sepultura, para el día de mi muerte. Y hay algo y es que Jesús subraya que María aquí los cuidados los tenía que dar. María siempre esa servidora que la palabra nos habla utilizó la unción ritual de sepultura que era obligatoria en ese momento para los judíos allá en esa época. Jesús siempre pensó en su muerte. Él sabía que tenía que morir. Él sabía por qué su padre lo había mandado a este mundo. Pero claro. A diferencia de todos, él sabía que no se iba a quedar en la cruz, que él iba a tener el Easter, la resurrección, la Pascua al tercer día. Al tercer día, él iba a salir victorioso de la muerte y eso es lo que todos vamos a celebrar en pocos días aquí en la iglesia. Parece en ese momento y es interesante que nos pasemos a ese año 33 porque la gente quedó asombrada cuando Cristo murió porque claro es como un familiar cuando fallece uno lo va a extrañar ya no lo va a ver físicamente pero después se dieron cuenta y nos dimos cuenta por qué él murió y para qué él murió es importante hermanos y en estos 11 versos del capítulo 12 de Juan podemos concluir varias cosas o especialmente hay tres actitudes diferentes que encontramos ahí la primera actitud está en el verso 2 del capítulo 12 de Juan y es la actitud la de Marta quien le hizo una cena a Jesús el servir el servicio cuántas veces hemos hablado del privilegio de servir de ser servidores de Dios nos hemos puesto a pensar si hubiéramos vivido en el año 33 y Jesús llega a cenar a nuestra casa qué sería de nuestra vida cómo lo hubiéramos recibido la segunda actitud es la de María quien ungió los pies de Jesús la tercera actitud que está en el verso cuarto quinto y sexto es la actitud de Judas quien criticó la acción de María recordemos que Judas después iba a traicionar al maestro mientras que Judas nunca reconoció a Jesús como el Mesías nosotros Hoy en día lo reconocemos como nuestro Señor, como nuestro Salvador. Hemos visto infinidad de cosas que Jesús ha hecho en nuestra vida. Especialmente hemos visto esos milagros como es la respuesta de una oración. Como es sentir la presencia viva de Dios en nuestra vida. Este texto de hoy hermanos nos sirve para identificarnos con el servicio nos sirve para recordar una vez más la redención salvadora que hizo Jesús por nosotros que hizo Dios cuando envió a su hijo a morir por nosotros preguntémonos qué me falta para ser servidor me falta un poco más de humildad me falta un poco más entregarle mi tiempo al Señor o qué es lo que me impide servirle más al Señor. Hay algo que me impide, pensemos en este tiempo de cuaresma y propongámonos a tener ese cambio en nuestra vida para ser más semejantes al Señor. Queridas hermanas y hermanos, que el Señor nos siga ayudando, nos siga bendiciendo y nos siga protegiendo por siempre. Amén. It is not interesting coming back to the same house that we were about a month ago, you know. And of all the people, and you know, when, when you read the Gospels through, the, 
these three, Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, they're, they're again and again, many times in the scriptures. And, yeah, and you, know, you know, we know from John 11, you know, that they were Jesus' friends. You know, they were, they were probably, it was a place where Jesus could go and he could feel like he was at home in many ways. And you could see it, you know, the first time when we had it, it's from Luke 10, where 38 to 42, where that was the reading about a month ago, where Mary and Martha are just, what, squabbling about taking care of the cooking and getting everything ready. And you know, the, the normal argue, arguing that siblings will have. And I've, if you have siblings who are close in age, you know, you love them, but you, you argue with them about almost anything. And you know, you see them in that situation and, you know, just being themselves in front of Jesus. Between that and this moment... We had the time that's really counted the first 44 verses of John chapter 11 where Jesus gets news. He's uh, two days away from Lazarus and they get the word that Lazarus is sick. He's about to die. And remember what Jesus said, you know, this sickness will not end in death. And he just hung out, taught some more where he was. And then he said to his disciples, it's time to go back and go see Lazarus. He's asleep. And the disciples, remember, they said, oh, if he's sleeping, he's going to get better. That's the recipe for illness. Take a good nap and get some good sleep. And then, no, Jesus said, no, he's dead. And they go back. And one of the great moments in all the New Testament, do you remember what happens Jesus, after he talks with Martha and Mary, and both of them are saying, Jesus, if you'd only been here, our brother wouldn't have died. They both express incredible faith in him. And Jesus goes to the tomb. And remember that the shortest verse of scripture, Jesus wept with the emotion and grief of all that happened. Knowing death is not forever, death is painful. And Jesus felt that experience. But then he goes to the tomb and stands outside of the tomb and says, roll away the stone. And they say, well, it's been, it's been several days now. It's not going to be pleasant. Roll it away. And then he says, Lazarus, come out. And the Lazarus in grave clothes, I'm sure, waddled out. I don't know, like a penguin. I don't know if how, you, how you'd walk in wrapped up in the burial cloths that they wrap you up in. And now later, Jesus comes back to Bethany. And Martha's throwing a big, big, big dinner in honor of Jesus coming to town. And she's thinking, you know... I'm the, I bet she was pulling out all the stops. I don't know, have you ever had anybody want to just do every, anything and everything you could when they come over? You know, just a way of thinking because, you know what? She had her brother back. And she was thankful, just filled with excitement. Jesus was there again. And she's cooking away. It's ironic, Mary, last time she was sitting at the feet of Jesus... This time she goes to the feet of Jesus and anoints his feet with this expensive perfume. Pure nard. I don't know what pure nard is, really. You know, 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 I can imagine it's got to be fresh or just a positive thing. I've never bought any nard for my wife. Men out there, have you bought your wife any nard any time? old-fashioned perfume and just thinking about that. Anointing his feet with a lot of it. The best stuff. And it's interesting, Judas interrupts and said, wait a minute, this, you could have sold that for a whole year's wages, how much there was there. And you know, Jesus said, you know, 
the poor you're always, I was asked that question actually this week ironically about are there the poor going to be there and I said well the poor are always going to be around there. Jesus said they're always going to be the poor in society. The poor, they're always going to have the poor but Jesus said you're not going to always have me. Looking forward to because six days later what would happen? Jesus would go to the cross. And you know who was a bit of a celebrity at this time was Lazarus. I remember, you know, I, I bet Lazarus was pretty famous. And they said, you know, the Pharisees, you know, they wanted to get rid of Jesus because of the crowd. You know who else drew a crowd? Lazarus drew a crowd. Because, you know, he could say, well, what was it like being dead for days? What you see? Did you see a bright light? And people marveled to see Lazarus. But even more to see and to hear Jesus. Do you know this, this gift that Mary gave, you know. That we also had in this dinner time, what we, actually back in the very beginning, what, there was a sinful woman who washed Jesus' feet with her tears and wiped him with her hair. It's a totally different event. There's a lot of t times there's similar things happen in the gospel. But even John at the end of his gospel says, you know, if we wrote down everything Jesus said and did, there's not enough paper and ink in the whole world. But Mary, the sister of Lazarus and Martha, did the best thing she could think to do, a way of saying, thank you, Jesus. Anointed his feet. In sort of a prophetic way for burial. Do you know sometimes things happen that way in prophetic ways. And you know. Um, last Sunday I preached on. Abraham and Isaac and going to the mount. And I said you know what Isaac had the most amazing faith. And then you know in doing that and, and all that. But it's really prefiguring what is going to happen with Jesus. She was proclaiming, and Jesus brought this up, you know, you're not going to have me for that long. He was already preparing the disciples for, do you know what? He wasn't going to be with them for many more days. But on the third day, things change. They changed with Lazarus. They changed with Jesus after his death on the third day. Do you know one thing that we can always do, and we always go through difficult times and times when you're just sitting and soaking up Jesus, and sometimes you're down in the dumps, sometimes you're celebrating like you've never celebrated before. Life has many changes in it, but Jesus is the same. Yesterday, today, and forevermore. And his blessings are forevermore. In his name, amen. We now gather our offerings for our Lord.
we go to the Lord with our prayers. Lord Jesus, in this reading we see you knowing what is coming the following week. And so do we. Because we could hear the story. We know what awaits you. But Lord, we thank you for going willingly, for knowing what was to come. But your love was greater than our sins, our failures, the evil of this world. Lord, thank you. And Lord, we can't anoint your feet, but we can say thank you with our hearts, from our souls, with all that we are. And we say thank you. And Lord, we pray for each other. We pray for people in need. We remember people who mourn. I, Mary and Martha mourned at the tomb of Lazarus. And some people in Nashville have been mourning this week is that shooting at that covenant school. Lord, you are the only one who can answer and conquer questions of life and death. You do so in Lazarus and do for those families. Bring comfort and peace. And Lord, help us. Help us as your people to glorify Jesus in our actions, in our words, and our thoughts. We say thank you. In Jesus' name. Oremos, hermanos. Amado Dios, primeramente, Señor, te damos nuevamente las gracias a ti. Gracias porque cuando miramos las cosas que has hecho en nuestra vida, Señor, es una lista sin fin. Cada día, cada instante, Señor, tú nos muestras tu amor incondicional, tu amor ejemplar, Señor, con cada uno de nosotros. Gracias por este tiempo tan especial en la iglesia, este tiempo de cuaresma, Señor, que es tan importante porque seguimos edificando e incrementando nuestra fe. Oramos por cada persona aquí presente esta noche, Señor. También oramos, Señor, por las personas que están enfermas en estos momentos, por el sufrimiento del ser humano, Señor. Hemos escuchado sufrimientos en este país con tragedias últimamente, Señor. A nivel mundial también. Y existe una ausencia tuya en las personas, Señor. Ayúdanos para que las personas te conozcan a ti de una manera real, Señor. Bendícenos en todo momento y que especialmente tu protección sea siempre con cada uno de nosotros. Ayúdanos para el domingo. Llegar a la iglesia para este inicio de la Semana Santa, como es el Domingo de Palma, Señor. Y en tus manos siempre nos ponemos. Regrésanos con bien esta noche a nuestros hogares. Y hemos orado con acción de gracias en el nombre de Jesús. Amén. We rise and pray together the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hear these words from the Aaronic, Aaronic benediction again. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be to gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. Amen. Vamos a recibir la bendición, queridas hermanas y hermanos. El Señor te bendiga y te guarde. El Señor haga resplandecer su rostro sobre ti y tenga misericordia de ti. El Señor alce sobre ti su rostro y te dé siempre su paz. Sing Amazing Grace, hymn number 744, not 374. Please be seated.
El último himno, hermanos, es el número 744. Por favor, sentémonos. Remember, next week, uh, Bilingual Monday, Thursday at 6.30, and then Good Friday, I'm doing Good Friday at 6.30, and Miguel's doing it at 7.30, so afterwards. So, have a great week, everyone. Señor los bendiga y los guarde por siempre, hermanos. Amen.